Hello, this is the second behind the scenes video for Glatorian Battle. In this video, I'll go over techniques and some helpful tricks I use during the filming. When I first made stop motion animations, I would have my camera on a tripod, take pictures manually, and afterwards upload them to my computer. Ever since the Krana, however, I have been animating with my camera tethered to my computer running through stop motion software. Filming with my camera tethered to my computer has a few advantages over my old method. First, it allows me to see what my camera sees in real time. This means I can use a large monitor to make sure the exposure and framing of a shot are correct. I can also do onion skinning, which is when the pictures I have already taken are overlaid onto what my camera currently sees. This lets me gauge how far I need to move the bionicle for the next frame. Another advantage is that I do not need to physically press the button on the camera to take pictures. While it might not seem like much, I found that pressing the shutter button on the camera usually introduces a noticeable amount of camera shake, especially when the tripod is on a carpet floor, which can compress and spring back. The biggest advantage of filming tethered to a computer is that I can instantly play back the pictures I have already taken. This lets me gauge how my current animation is looking, and lets me reshoot a frame if I'm not happy with the picture I just took. Reviewing my animation like this frame by frame takes additional time, but I think it really helps improve the quality of my animation. If you would like to do this yourself, I would recommend software like Animator DV Simple Plus, Monkey Jam, iStop Motion, or Stop Motion Pro. You'll need to have a camera like a webcam or a DSLR that can send a video feed through a USB cable to your computer. There are already a lot of tutorials on YouTube for how to shoot tether to your computer, so I'll put links to some of them in the description. Doing stop motion animation in the sand was an interesting experience. It has a few advantages. Bionicles stick in the sand, so they don't fall over easily. Sand also looks great on camera. It's textured and moves around realistically. But sand is also a really big pain. Small movements, like rotating a head, are nearly impossible because bionicles won't stay in place even when secured by metal clips. This shot in particular was surprisingly difficult. I wasn't even able to hold the bionicle steady throughout the whole shot. By the way, these metal clips are called helping hands, or soldering stands, and are really inexpensive and easy to find online. Sand also gets everywhere and it can scratch and permanently make Lego joints move less smoothly. I'm glad I used it for this animation, but I might not be so enthusiastic about using it in the future. For the first few shots, I kept getting light flicker, which is where each frame appears to have a different brightness. I knew my camera was on manual settings and all natural light was blocked out, so I wasn't sure what was causing it. Then, I realized that light was bouncing off me and onto the set. The way I had things set up, the main sunlight points directly at where I am sitting while I animate, so light would bounce off me and onto the set. Since I would not always sit back down in the same place after moving the bionicles for one frame, the amount of light bouncing off me would change each frame. I found that using black t-shirts worked well in reducing this light bounce, but even still, light bouncing off my skin was enough to cause problems, so I ended up moving my chair back and moving away from the set whenever I took a picture. Since this is an action video, I tried to make the camera move to add energy. This is difficult with stop motion, because in order to make a smooth camera move, the camera has to be moved in precise increments. To do this, I made a rig out of LEGO that uses a series of gears, which convert large movements of this wheel into small precise camera movements. Every time I turn this wheel, the drive wheels turn 1 50th of a revolution. For this shot, I started out turning the wheel at one rotation for the first frame, then I moved to two for the second frame, and so on, until I was at a speed of ten turns per frame. Then, I reversed the process and started moving the rig less and less per frame. This adds a realistic acceleration, also known as ease in, ease out. Despite being made out of only LEGO pieces, this camera rig produced some great results. I only ended up using the rig for a few shots, but I plan on using it much more in the future. I shot this video at 24 frames per second, so this video, which is 2 minutes long, had over 2000 frames. I found that I can shoot about 2-3 to three seconds of footage in an hour, so I think it took about 50 hours to film this short video. Since stop motion takes so much time and I had to deal with school, I shot this video in three blocks. I filmed the beginning of the fight in August of 2013, right after I had finished the Krana. Then school picked up and I didn't get to it until December, when I filmed the next 30 seconds. Then, it wasn't until summer of 2014 that I got the time to finish the rest of the fight. 
This is also when I decided that the fight was going to be about naming Click, and since he appeared in the beginning and end of the video, those were the last shots that I did. Between these shooting blocks, I dismantled and reconstructed the set multiple times so that other people could use the table when I wasn't animating. One issue that I had to overcome while filming is the size of the set. For most of the fighting shots, the bionicles would have been too far away from the edge of the table for me to reach them comfortably, so I had to move the rock wall forward when I wanted to film scenes that required lots of movement and fighting, and then I had to move the rock wall back whenever I needed a more wide open scene. For some shots, however, the set wasn't big enough. Take this scene for example. In order to get a shot from this angle, I needed to move the bionicles to the very edge of the table to ensure that there was enough sand to fill the background. Since the bionicles were facing a different direction, I also needed to move the lights. Then for the next shot, they needed to be back in the middle of the set. I had to do this quite a few times. Even though some shots were filmed months apart, the set was rebuilt multiple times, and the bionicles were in different locations, all of the shots meshed with each other once they were edited together. With all of the filming done, I still had a lot of work left to do. In the next video, I will cover everything that goes into the post-production, including visual effects, color grading, and sound effects. <laughs>